Hi, I'm Michael Croker, and this is Park Life. I've worked in the Australian theme park industry for a little over 30 years. And in this podcast series, I spend time in conversation with the people inside the business of making memories. Thanks for joining me. I hope you can subscribe, rate and review. Enjoy the ride. Bikash Ranhawar is currently the Chief Operating Officer with Village Roadshow Theme Parks. His industry journey began many years ago as a young man making his way in a new country filled with new opportunities. We had a little time together in his office at the end of 2020, and here's that conversation. Can you just tell us very briefly, what's the current role you hold with Village Roadshow Theme Parks? Okay, so, so the role I hold right now is, is of the Chief Operating Officer uh, for VRTP. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, when you look at uh, the years of service, I mean, I've, I've just completed 25 years of service. Wow. So, yes, yeah, tremendous feeling of, yeah. of pride and joy and happiness. Yeah, that's fantastic. Where did it begin? Uh, for me, uh, uh, certainly, I mean, tourism wasn't something that was on the radar uh, when I was uh, 17, 18 year old, you know, and uh, coming, uh, coming to Australia was, uh, was purely uh, by chance and uh, it was something that just happened and, uh, and I'm really not sure how it happened, but it happened and I, I was here. Um, I've been here for over 30 years and uh, um, I studied, I was studying at Griffith University here, yeah. you know, at, and at that point, uh, there were about 700, 800 students. Wow. You know, and, and compared to what it is now, it was very small. Yeah. Uh, the city was very small. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that amazed and, me. And I don't mean to stop you there, but before you go on, I just have to go back because something I, I'm still not getting. How, do you, how did you not know how you got here? Were, were you motivated to come to Australia for a particular well, reason? It, well, well, my plan, uh, my original plan was to go to the US uh, right. because that's where, that was the trend, right? Yeah. Uh, I come from India and, uh, and that was the thing. You finish school, you go and study in the US and uh, get a job and whatnot. But I just wanted to get out, right? Yeah. And, um, and, and as it happened that my papers for Australia came fairly quick within two months. Right. And I found myself packed up and I'm sitting on the plane and I went, holy shit, I'm, I'm leaving my country. I'm leaving all my mates. I'm, I'm going somewhere that I know nothing about. The only thing I knew about Australia was the cricket, right? And Sir Donald <laughs> Bradman. <Yeah. laughs> and, and, and the occasional kangaroo that came to, to my mind, which you would see on, uh, on TV. Yeah. Uh, and Seagulls, you know, the Perth Stadium and, and the Gabba and uh, mm. MCG. You mm. know, these, these were the things that, that, that was Australia to right. me. Sydney Harbour Bridge, yeah. the Opera House. And, and that's where it stopped. So how do you end up at Griffith when I guess the Gold Coast is like a little town? Yeah, I had a family member that had been here and, and he said to me that uh, this would be the best place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's up and coming uh, and, um, and you, you could make a good life there. Uh, yeah. You know, it's clean, it's safe. Uh, people are, are, are good, which is true, yeah. you know, very friendly. Um, and and I, I've got some interesting uh, stories, you know, when, when, I, when I first came here and uh, I remember I was renting this place and uh, there was this guy, he came to me and, uh, and we were talking and he said, fair dinkum, fair dinkum. And <laughs> I had no idea who fair dinkum was. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, can, can you keep saying fair dinkum? Who is fair dinkum? Um, and, and yeah, so, yeah. I, I, you know, I, it was just amazing. I mean, the, this country, this, this city welcomed me with open arms and uh, one thing led to the next. Uh, you know, I got a job at Seawell Resort. Uh, it used to be called Seawell Nara. What year was that? That was in 1993, 94. Yeah. Um, and uh, as a casual waiter, and I was just wow. about to finish, complete my degree. I had, I think I had about six or seven months left. Mm -hmm. and, and the degree was? Uh, it was my bachelor's in uh, hotel management. Right. And, okay. and prior to coming here, I had my bachelor's degree in commerce as well. Mm. Now, there's another twist to it. I mean, I came here to do something else, and I didn't tell my father, and I changed my degree. And, and right. the reason why I did tourism, because... I felt that's one way I could meet up with people and, and make friends. And, and realistically, that was my only motivation. Yeah. And, and I thought that, you know what, a lot of people said to me that, listen, if you work in restaurants and blah, 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 you'll make contacts, mm. you'll be able to travel the world. And, and my aim was to just, you know, keep traveling. Mm. 
Uh, but then, uh, you know, I met my beautiful wife, uh, well, my then uh, girlfriend. Uh, around the same time. Uh, around the same time. Yeah. And, and uh, we were more friends. And, uh, and I guess that was the anchor. And, uh, yeah. and uh, that put a complete stop to my travel plans. Right. But they, then working in hospitality, working for Village at that point, and, and uh, you know, the culture, the, the style, the management, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you know, the passion, uh, yeah. I, it was an addiction yeah. uh, that uh, continued to grow and, yeah. uh, and you fell in love with, the, with making memories. You fell in yeah. love with, you know, even if I was cleaning cutlery and washing dishes or, or clearing someone's table or taking a drink order and, and watching people be happy. Uh, you know, it, w it was a buzz that's very yeah. difficult to explain, but even the smallest of happiness that you would see in people yeah. and, and the difference that you made in someone's moment uh, was, was, uh, was is, is still an incredible feeling, that's you know, and I do it on a bigger scale now. For sure, but it's the same fundamental stuff that's going on. Yeah, correct. And, and uh, yeah, so look, look, uh, uh, you know, my career uh, went from a casual waiter to like a part-time supervisor. And, uh, and I never looked back, you know, uh, and I landed yeah. up as GM of that property and then, uh, you know, went on to becoming GM at SeaWorld. And well, before we jump that far ahead, can I just go back to, here's this, this young kid, he's arrived from a new country, he's doing his study, he's got this gig at a new attraction, a new resort that's just opened on the Gold Coast. Did you have a support system around? Did you, did you have mentorship? Or how did you... Did you have to battle any kind of insecurity or self-doubt? Oh, it was it was very hard. Uh, it was probably uh, I, I think getting working in a restaurant was probably with no experience yeah. and trying to sell myself to get that job without any experience yeah. was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life because there was next to there was no traineeships. Uh, you, you didn't have YouTube. You didn't have the internet. Right. Uh, you know, I you had to have an understanding of, of uh, you know the alcohol, the cocktails, sure. wine, yeah. uh, the way people consume uh, um, uh, F &B and B, yeah. uh, and and you know the, just the style and what's expected. So it was uh, it was very difficult. It was uh, you know I had to I. I had to read books and uh, yeah. and, um, and and when you read things, uh, you know they, that some of it did not make any sense in, yeah. in the real world. And uh, so it was a challenge. It was a battle. I mean, versus did you, now. Did you ever feel in that period? Did you ever feel like walking away? Because there's obviously a tenacity in you that's still there. If there wasn't, there wouldn't have been that kid leaving the country and coming here in the first place. But was there a, an unwillingness in you to surrender? Did you did did you ever go through a period where you thought, oh, you know what? This, this is too tough. Uh, yeah, okay, let me take two steps back. So my, my first experience in a restaurant was, uh, you know, I was asked to carry a tray of champagne flutes with a bottle of Moe Chandon and it was like 200 odd dollars then. Yeah. Uh, to a hen's party. And as I approached the table, I actually dropped it. Uh. And, and, it and the glass smashed everywhere. The bottle fell on the, on the, on the bride-to-be. And, wow. uh, and uh, at that point, there was pin drop silence. Uh, and I had close to 300 eyes staring at me. Um, that was a defining moment for me because at that point, um, I had feelings of um, uh, the fear and embarrassment. Mm -hmm. uh, it kicked in and I said, this is not for me. I was ashamed. Mm. I, I was at the lowest point of my life. Mm. Uh, it sounds harsh, but it's true. I mean, I still remember that. Um, but then, uh, you know, uh, something triggered and uh, maybe that was, uh, you know, that's the person I am today. Mm. And, uh, and it needed that to happen. And it triggered that, hang on a minute, you can do this. Mm. It can't get any worse. Mm -hmm. So that was the worst, right? And <laughs> I can only go upwards. Yeah. And and that's yeah. the attitude I have in life is, uh, you know, a failure does not, should not prevent you from moving forward. It teaches you, it makes you stronger. Mm. And and realistically, that is what experiences, mm. you know, mm. good and bad. Uh, that's what shapes up your life, mm. your personal life, your professional life. Was that challenging for you to grow in that business and, and in its structure in terms of leadership? when you're coming from frontline. I know a lot of people in positions of leadership in many businesses, not only the theme park industry, will talk about the challenge of progressing within a business and leaving the team that you were in at the front line behind as you move through. It's not always an easy transition. It's, it's, it's not an easy transition, but uh, uh, you know, you've, uh, look, I applied for, for the first supervisory role. 
I applied three times and I got knocked back all yeah. three times. Now that was very disheartening. But uh, again, true to myself and my nature and my character, I never gave up. Mm. Uh, in fact, I questioned every reason why I did not <laughs> get there and I worked on it. And that's yeah. the only thing I could do, yeah. really, because I felt that if I'm not succeeding here, I'm not going to leave this place and go somewhere else because I'll yeah. potentially have the same problem. So you were able to ask yourself the question of, okay, well, why then? And then if I yeah. can understand why, yeah. I can work on those parts of me. Correct. And, yeah. and it, was, it was just, you know, I constantly pushed myself and I worked extremely hard to, uh, to bridge any gaps. So it, it, it's like this, you know, every time there was a question mark in my head, I found an answer. Mm. Uh, right or wrong, I found an answer and I moved forward. And every day was a new day. I looked at every single day as a challenge, an opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, the one thing I did and I still do is that when I leave work, uh, you know, I, t I take a moment uh, uh, to truly, truly ask myself that did I do everything right today mm. for my team, for mm. the people I work with, for the owners of the business, for the customers, mm. right? Mm. Now, uh, if I can smile after asking my that, myself that question, um, I know I've done the right thing and, mm. um, and, uh, and I feel good about it. Mm. And now there are times when y I do feel that I could have done more. Mm. So. The next day, I put in that little bit more effort, and and there are days when you will operate at fifty percent and sixty mm. percent, and that's okay. Mm. Uh, but you 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 know, it's not a the the work we do, the work we do, Michael, mm. uh, tourism. You know, it will it will never have a finishing line. No. You know, it is a race mm. where it, it where you know you you will eventually pass the baton on to someone else, mm. and mm. that person will continue on with this journey, right? Mm. Mm. So. Uh, it, it's it's all about growth. It's all about innovation. It's all mm. about teaching yourself. It's a, it's about making a difference to people's lives mm. and, and impacting them in the best possible way. Um, uh, you know, it's a journey. It's a beautiful journey. Mm, and, absolutely. And uh, yeah. Who who came along at a time during this rise through the, your, your time at the SeaWorld Resort? Was there a particular mentor? Yeah, so I had, uh, you know, I, I worked uh, with uh, my, my food and beverage manager then, uh, you know, he, he, was, he, he was incredible. That man had, uh, uh, was, a, was an extremely hard worker and, uh, and I looked up uh, at him uh, for guidance and, uh, and uh, to, to a point where I blindly accepted every, every advice he gave me. Right. And I did everything that he asked me to do. Right, and I, uh, out of habit, I look at people, and I, I, if, if there's something that uh, touches me in a positive manner, I try and ask them questions, and I try mm. and see what, what they're doing, how they're mm. doing, and, and I try and embrace that. Right, mm. um, so I try and learn from everybody. You know, mm. I, I try and pick up all the good points. Certainly, uh, the, the then FMB manager was a big impact, mm. had a big impact. Then, then as my position grew. The general manager of the hotel, you know, he was he was an incredible human being. Mm. Uh, I don't believe that I would ever get to work with someone like that. Mm. Uh, you know, there were a lot of good things, and uh, he was always going at two thousand kilometers yeah. an hour yeah, yeah. when the speed limit was ten k. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I learned so much from that man yeah. as well, and uh, all the good stuff, you know, mm. the energy and. Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, even co-workers, you know, there were mm. waiters I worked with, there were other supervisors I worked with, mm. and they, everyone bought something, something beautiful to to the table. Yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because some of the sometimes the most challenging leaders in your life can be the ones that are the greatest teachers too. You know, I had a guy that I was reporting to when I was a young announcer at SeaWorld, and almost after every show, he would sit down and give you notes almost on a daily basis. To the point where I th it was exhausting, but those notes became a part of my DNA because he was right, hmm. and his, his fire was let's try and get this right every single day of the week, and you can be better. You can be better today, more so than you were yesterday. But you need to think of this, and you need to try that. And as a young guy, that was kind of exhausting. But after a while, it became auto reflex, and it became just something you did. Yeah, it and becomes a part of your DNA. It does, and then you realise, oh, I'm actually grateful. Yeah. Sometimes. In retrospect, I'm, I'm looking back. I'm grateful that I had some hard teachers. M Michael, this is no different to your parents. You know, when, when you're <laughs> yeah. a young kid, yeah. uh, your, your mother or your father will tell you that go to school. You cannot miss school. Yeah. You know, read this, read that. And, and we grew up in a different generation mm. with different mm. things in front of us uh, versus the kids that have the internet and whatnot, right? 
uh, I, I'm every person I speak to will say, "Shit, I wish I had uh, listened to my mm. mother or my I, father or whatever." True. And that's yeah. no different to your professional life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay? interesting. Yeah. It is no different to your professional life. But mm. but again, you know, it's what you do with what you have. Mm. Um, you can have the best of best of the best of the best of everything in front of you, but if you do nothing with it, it'll 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 have nothing. It'll have zero impact. Yeah. So I think everyone, there is not one person that cannot be uh, whatever they want to be. Yeah. But you're not going to be anything if you just sit there and think about it, right? Yeah. So the choice is up to us. You know, mm -hmm. either either do you want to be the player, or you want to be the spectator. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that, I like it. Let's stay in that space then. So how to how to understand that this young guy that's you know dropping bottles of Moe on hen's nights, uh, he's doing his studies. He's, he's new to the country and he's, he's doing the best to make his way. And you mentioned a little earlier how you know, eventually you were running that hotel, you were the GM. But how do, how do you get there? What, what is it that takes you through those layers? Were you creating opportunity or were you, just, were you meeting opportunity when it came? How were you preparing yourself to be ready for when those opportunities came by your, uh, your way. Uh, M Michael, there's two things to this, right? And, and, and this is a fact of life. When you work for a company, you could have the best skill set and the best talent, uh, but if the, if the business does not recognize that, mm. no matter what you do, you're not going to move anywhere, mm. right? So it is important for every business to have uh, leaders that, that believe in growing their team and mm. giving opportunities, right? Mm. So for me, the, the biggest advantage I had that I was working in a business that provided that mm. That's great. opportunity. Yeah. And and I I for one reason I have um, you know at that point I did not know that I you know I, I always think outside the box yeah. I always like to push the norm yeah. uh, anything that is normal does not sit well with me mm. Um, mm. Uh, I like to create something different mm. you know um, a, and um, you know I guess the reason why the internet was invented and Wi-Fi was invented mm. because people thought differently mm -hmm. okay mm. and you should not be scared to think differently you should not be scared to put an idea on, on the table mm. because you might have uh, one, that one idea that'll make it mm. and that'll be the biggest idea that changes direction mm. for for your team for you for everybody right mm. so I don't believe in in stopping I don't believe in failing I'm not scared mm -hmm. uh, of making mistakes mm. um, I'm not scared of feedback I'm not scared of criticism mm. uh, you should not be no one should be right mm. um, this that you you have to live your professional life mm. to the fullest. Mm. So what what's the immediate first? And that's terrific. What's the immediate first thing that happens for you to get out of that front line role? What you then take a role where you're yeah, and it, it, you know it's it's uh, you work with people, and all of a sudden uh, these people uh, are reporting into you, yeah. right? And then one of the one of the big challenges I had is mm. I was a fairly young. Manage yeah. manager, yeah, and I had people, uh, uh, you know, much older than me, mm -hmm. and that was a challenge. And some of some people did not uh, 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 appreciate that, mm -hmm. and and you know, there were various hurdles that were presented. But uh, again, you never give up. You know, you don't look at it like that. And I I always executed myself uh, uh, in in doing what's right for the people that I'm responsible for, and for my business, and for my customers. I did not pay any attention to any gossip or anything that was negative. I just kept prodding along, mm -hmm. and and eventually you find that people get sick and tired of, uh, 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 you know, banging on about something that they're not getting any traction on, mm -hmm. right? So they either move away or they, they jump on with you, and they can see clearly that your intent is good, yeah. and uh, you know you you wear people negative people down. And and the best way to wear negative people down is do not encourage mm. that behavior. Remain positive and remain focused. positive, yeah. focused, and yeah. and and stick to your goal. Yeah, stick to your goal. It is hard. Nothing mm. is easy, mm. but uh, you don't look back. You, you keep you keep doing and, and there are various you know obviously I mean if people don't work out you manage them uh, uh, with what's available mm. you know with different mechanisms in business um, and you do what you need to do mm. but uh, you know as long as you're true to yourself and you're doing the right thing mm. um, no one can stop you we should mention that you mentioned at the start 25 years in the business and nothing here is happening quick right so it's all happening as you pay your dues, you're putting in the hours, you're putting in the time, you're getting the experience, you're getting noticed, and that rise is happening. It's not happening necessarily to your time. It's happening in the time that 
is required for you to grow to move through each level. Can you tell me a little bit, a little bit about what it was like for you when we had, we're talking about Ernst Pfister, who was GM of the hotel for, for many years and was a, a figurehead on the Gold Coast as well in that industry and did, did some great things, had an amazing career. When you were moving into that role that's been left behind by a titan in the industry, which is what he was, right? And he was a big presence, a big personality and known for that. And you're coming into that role still as a young man and filling that seat at that stage of your career. Was that daunting? Uh, Michael, it, uh, I, I've been asked this question numerous times. Mm. It wasn't. In mm. fact, uh, I positioned myself uh, uh, in, in, in the best possible way because, as I said, you know, I've always looked up to the people I work with mm. and I never focus on people's negatives. Mm. I always look at what uh, what the the man that man had incredible amount of energy. Mm -hmm. It was there was it was never enough. Yeah. And in our industry, that is required. That is always uh, uh, that you have to. It's never enough. Yeah. You, know, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. So the fact that he pushed me uh, uh, to my limits and beyond, mm -hmm. um, you know, I embraced that. Plus, I had my own qualities mm -hmm. that was missing in his leadership mm -hmm. style. So, um, and, and that's what typically happens, right? So I came in uh, with my own uh, uh, foot fingerprints uh, and, and my own style. Uh, you know, I had bits and pieces of, of, uh, of the way he did things that were very effective. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it, was, it was a fusion, you know, it was a fusion of mm -hmm. my skill set and, and the things that I've learned over the years. Yeah. And I, I employed those skills. In, in, in everything I do and, and for me um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was actually it's quite easy and ag again you know it, y you can spend time thinking about what ifs and what nots mm, and mm. Uh, or what will people think I don't think what people think mm. I do what I need to do mm. I, I spend very little time in, th in, in, in uh, thinking about things that make no sense mm. I focus on, on my job at hand and yeah. what, what's in front of me you don't get distracted goals. from purpose. I, I don't get distracted no. very easily, and I, yeah. I you know, they, they could be a, um, the world could be collapsing, and if I've been given a goal, I will stick it to it. I yeah. will see it through. <laughs> to jump ahead a little bit, there's the the Sea World Resort unto itself is a great success story, and uh, we could get lost in the in the woods on that on that story alone. The transition from the resort business across to the theme park business, and I know we're jumping ahead in time here. What was that transition like for you? Because now suddenly there's a move out of, I guess, the, being around the hotel game and understanding it from a roots level right up. And now suddenly it's pure theme park slash marine park environment. And you're, you find yourself general manager of SeaWorld plus the resort. So the, it's quite a load to carry. How was that transition into theme park for you? Did you think well, I'm going to take across a lot of these same skills and fundamentally apply them hmm. and morph them. Well, how did you approach I that? Th I, think, uh, I think my uh, look, uh, this, is, this is for anybody out there listening, right? Uh, what is critical is when you are embarking on a new role is to understand what's required of that role, mm -hmm. is to understand what the KPIs are, understand what the responsibility is and, and what the expectation is. So once you clear, clearly, uh, you know, when, when, when it is articulated to you as to this is what is expected, then you put down a plan in place, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, business is business, right? The dynamics are different. And uh, uh, in this case, yes, we had marine animals. Uh, mm -hmm. And that excited me because uh, I had reached a point where, where I, I felt that I had done everything I could have done. And I needed new challenges because that's just my DNA where I need to keep doing stuff and I need to keep doing creating magic because um, it's an addiction, right? It's an addiction where, where you, you're ticking boxes and, and at Civil Resort, you know, with the room refurb, with the convention center. And I was a part of the event business for the broader group as well. We created a brand new team and, yeah. and kind of lift. That was a massive lift off, for right? Sure. Again, this is all new stuff, right? Yeah. But we knew what we were doing. And, and most importantly, I had tremendous amount of faith in the people that I was working with. Mm -hmm. You know, the, your team, your team, in my role, it's my, my team, my people, the people I care about. They are the ones that give me the energy and drive and the faith that if I have a vision or if the company puts a challenge in front of us, I can achieve that. Mm. Because this is no one person doing it. Mm. It's collectively, we make a strong team mm. and we get from A to B, mm. right? 
So SeaWorld was was so unique. It, it's it's so iconic. Yeah. And and uh, you know, with uh, as they say, with uh, great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And uh, you know, I really wanted to understand where the team was at We're, because without the team, nothing makes sense. You mm -hmm. know, it's the people that breed life into bricks and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I quickly established that. I connected with people. This wasn't about change or, you know, it was about more so about understanding. And it was a part of my career where I had to educate myself again, mm. uh, which is quite exciting, mm. uh, understanding. Now, uh, once I worked out exactly what my responsibility was and there were certain KPIs that were pressed on myself, that do, these are the things we want you to achieve. Uh, so I put a plan together, you know, put a team together. Uh, I made sure that every person understood what my intent was. Mm and how it would benefit every single person there and, and, and where we would be in five years time. So there was a purpose, there was a goal, there was a direction and, and you get everybody on board. Uh, and most importantly, you need to involve everybody. Yeah. You know, you need to, the journey needs to be a collective journey. It's not an individual journey. Mm. So, th so I got the buy-in and, and there were parts of the business where, uh, um, you know, I, I just wanted to go so far deep Mm -hmm. uh, without getting too granular because it's a big park and I still had all my other responsibilities. Um, and again, I, I, I learned more uh, in, in those five to six years as a GM of both properties mm. uh, um, than I did in, in the previous 10 years. It's interesting to hear you say, <coughs> here's what I learned so much more than I had in the previous 10 years and in, the, in that amount of time at SeaWorld. And in the next breath, I can recall someone in a very key role in the middle of your time there saying that he hadn't seen so much change in such a little time in his history of the park that was plus 35 years. And the comment being essentially one that we've seen a lot of positive change happen here very, very quickly under the cash. And I guess that ties back into this idea that you have of being fearless about change, unafraid to make a decision, being prepared to learn. That seems to be two themes that have carried you through every stage of your work. Yeah, cor life. correct, My, Michael. Uh, and and you know, a lot of the changes were very basic stuff. You yeah. Know? Uh, and uh, but people and it can was see listening. things change. It was listening to the team. Yeah. You know, we, we we have some of the best team members that you could ask for, and uh, all I did was I I listened mm. and uh, I gave them a voice, mm. and uh, everything and anything that made sense. Uh, that I could in my role and in, under my uh, um, approvals, um, uh, I, I executed that straight away. And, and that's empowering people, you know. The, in, in every business, you know, if people see that they come up with things and that's been implemented, you know, you, you buy in straight away. Mm -hmm. it, that, that's what teamwork is. That's, that's what being a part of a team is, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we, we created so much. And, uh, and that was probably, I... I'm always busy, I like to be busy, but I was so busy over that period. Uh, busy creating joy, busy creating happiness, mm, busy creating mm. that team environment. Mm. And, uh, and that's not a credit to me, that's a credit to every single person that uh, felt comfortable um, talking about things mm. uh, and, and bringing ideas to the table. Mm. And, and the fact that we could Im I could empower them. I think I think that that was it was very good. It was beautiful. If we jump ahead then and, and look at where you are now with uh, the, the the career you've had, and you get some distance enough now to kind of look back at that trajectory, how would you summarise the 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 ability to move through adversity? And I know a lot of people wrestle with that. I heard just the other night when I was talking with someone who's a friend of mine who works with young actors and actresses, and he said that one of the things he tells them is. Don't ever stop moving forward. The day that you stop might be the day before opportunity is waiting for you and you're not prepared to meet it, you're not ready to meet it because you've thrown the towel in. And his point was that the message is you just have to keep going. If it's a thing you love, you have to keep going and you move through the adversity. When you get that distance and look back, you obviously had your, your challenges and your obstacles and many people do. What, what enabled you to work through them? What gave you resilience? Um, and th this is this is true story. This is uh, and and uh, uh, you know what? Try try this. The next time you're faced with a problem or something bad happens, instead of taking in the negatives and uh, and oh my God, it's happened to me! Wow. Change your mindset. 
and look for the opportunity in, in that adversity. Okay, what can I do out of this? Because everything has a plus and minus, right? Mm -hmm. When something bad happens, it, it clears the way for something really good. And I've seen that. And now the good might be only 20% and sometimes mm. the good is huge, whatever it is. So, so all I'm doing is, which what I've always done, is there is a moment where you get negative, right? But I very quickly move myself from that space into the positive mm. space. Mm. And, and true to, you know, people you work with, you know, let's focus on everybody's positives. And you're not giving air time to negativity, right? You're killing it. You're killing that virus. Mm. You, you, you are focusing on good. Mm -hmm. And that flows, that's contagious. Mm. It's contagious and it goes. So yes, I've had tough times. And yes, there were times when I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that I felt that uh, I'm, wow, you know? But I think what we've gone through now with COVID and, and all yeah. that sort of stuff, that was the biggest test of my entire career. I sure. never thought I would deal with it. Yeah. But it has made me a stronger person. Mm. Um, uh, I had a lot of difficulty dealing with this mm. um, mentally, physically, personally, uh, because everything that you know and you took for granted disappeared overnight, mm. and, uh, and literally the everything started collapsing. Right, and you had zero control. This is the first time uh, I, I felt I had no control. Mm. I don't believe anyone had any mm. control or any direction. Yeah. So when you are structured and you you set goals. But there's a two-year goal, five-year goal, it, mm. it puts you in a very difficult spot. But then very quickly, you know, true to ourselves, we started looking for opportunities. Yeah. And, and once that started happening, we, we set new KPIs in this new norm. Mm. And, uh, and all of a sudden, we started building our business and, and mm. looking at different things and how to bring people back in and yeah. make the most out of what you have. Yeah. You know, control the things you can control. Uh, and sometimes, you know, bad things happen. You, you can't change it. You just got to manage it. Mm. Right? Mm. And that's the key here. Yeah. How do you think the industry globally, locally, maintains its relevancy as it moves through into a what still may not yet be a post-COVID world? How, do we, how does the industry in your eyes maintain its purpose <coughs> as it starts to move forward? Um, I don't believe we lost our purpose. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, uh, I, I believe this, is a, a, this was a big pause right and unknown to uh, many and uh, no one was prepared for this and uh, whilst there's so many conspiracies and theories out there truth be told uh, we need to this is something that's happened and it's it's we just need to learn to live with it mm -hmm. right and tweak and it's all about tweaking it's all about being innovative you mm -hmm. know we have so many clever people around the world mm -hmm. uh, we, we we just need to adapt it's funny you know the when we recently launched Spooky Nights at SeaWorld as a family-based Halloween event, which was something that just recently uh, concluded, as we know, with all the spectacle that was in that night from a tech perspective and lighting and sound, I remember there was a one, one night there I was passing a mother and daughter dancing, dancing like no one was watching, you know, hand in hand, while this track was playing and the little girl was dressed as a pirate and... I remember thinking to myself in this very simple moment, that is what this industry is still about. And people will always, will always be looking to have a space where they can have those moments with the people they care about and love. Correct, Michael. In fact, this has, this is a reset mm. that, uh, that will make people appreciate things that they had gotten used to, mm. right? Mm. Again, to what I said, that people take things for granted. You know, we all become immune to everything around us, right? Mm. But you got to take a moment, stop, and think about what you have in front of you mm. and what you've achieved, you know? And we all need to do that. Uh, you know, I believe uh, 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 traditional things like... Uh, um, going out and uh, you know watching a movie going for a walk mm. going for a picnic going for a swim and uh, these things uh, that had become uh, you know technology has trapped us mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us uh, you know where we can do a lot of things sitting at home on our phone mm. and um, you know go to any part of the world and look at live footage of things happening mm. Uh, but we forget the place we live in and we forget the environment that's surrounding us. Yeah. So I believe some of that personal habits will change. I believe, um, I, I think people will be more caring towards each other. Yeah. Um, there will be a lot of mental stuff that will come out of all of this. Mm. But the opportunities that will come out of this uh, would be will be phenomenal. Mm. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
uh, it excites me to think what the what the future holds for us. It yeah. excites me, and I'm 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 looking for things that uh, we can do differently. Yeah, you know, because we monotony is not good for mm. anybody. Mm. There are two questions I ask in every session that we have on Park Life, and I'd like to ask you those questions. It's just mm. uh, very straightforward. If you had to pull up one single memory. What's the proudest moment in your professional life? There might be a bunch, but what's one that stands out? In my professional life, um, um, I, I don't have any one moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to me, uh, every day stands out. Uh, and, and look, it's, I'm, I'm being truthful. Uh, every single day that I come to work is a new day. Mm. And every single day, there's a new challenge, a new opportunity. Uh, things evolve, you know, in, in our business, in the theme park business, in tourism. Uh, there is no day that's the same, mm -hmm. right? There are things that are happening out there which you, you think you've got it all, but, but something else comes up. Yeah. So um, uh, every day is, has been uh, outstanding for me. Mm -hmm. um, I said this the other day that 25 years has been, uh, I'm very proud of it. And, and um, every single day I have learned something. Mm -hmm. Every single day has been has been has been amazing, incredible for me. And what drives you still after twenty five years? What motivates you to get up, get back in? When when you uh, get into the business of making a difference, when you get in the business of entertainment, of of uh, seeing families uh, come in and being happy and uh, smiling, and uh, you know you're creating something out of nothing. Uh, that in itself uh, is is uh, is is one of the biggest drivers. Yeah, to you know bring you back. And what else can I do? Or, or you know you're in the creating. You're we're in the magic making magic business literally. Mm. And uh, and I'm very blessed and fortunate that I chose this. Uh, it was out of accident. It was purely to meet people, and and it's become an obsession. And. Uh, mm. And I don't think uh, I think I'm, I'll be one of those people that uh, I would not think for a moment that I should have done something different. Yeah. I would not change it, and I think I would come back in the next ten lives and do the same. And choose thing. it, yeah, yeah. That kind of answers the final thing I'd like to ask you. What would what would the Bikasha today want to tell that kid that was walking around and? doing his studies and working on his own, living on his own, trying to start a new life. What would Bikash today go back and tell that kid if he could go back and tell him something? What would he tell him? Keep doing what you're doing because you're going to land up there, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Exactly. Exactly. It's been great talking to you, Bikash. Thanks for making time here on Park Life. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, it. Michael.